Uh, I welcome you all to the module 11 uh, of this course. So, the module 11 is about again uh, skills of emotional intelligence. So, the emotional intelligence part 2. So, we are discussing about different skills of emotional intelligence uh, one by one in each of this lecture in module 10 and module 11. So, today is the last lecture of module 11 and overall it is lecture number 28. So, today we will be talking about uh, one of the important skills of uh, emotional intelligence which is social skills or which is also connected to the concept of so social intelligence. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let me give you a brief recap of what we uh, discussed in the last lecture. So, the last, last lecture we are discussing about the one of the important uh, another important skills of emotional intelligence which is empathy. So, in that context we are discussing uh, the concept of empathy, sympathy and compassion, how they are different from each other. So, basically it is difference in terms of intensity of emotional involvement in each of these terms. So, sympathy comes first then empathy and then compassion. Compassion kind of in includes both sympathy, empathy as well as the intention to relieve the sufferings of another individual in terms of actions. So, we have discussed all these differences and also we discussed uh, the components of empathy, important uh, components and uh, constituents of empathy. Uh, we also discussed uh, the role of mirror neuron system in the empathy. So, where you know, the research has found that a system of uh, neurons in the brain in certain specific part of the brain which are responsible for imitating the behaviors of others or imitating the actions and the uh, emotions of other individuals. So, this mirror neurons plays very important role in kind of experience of empathy and uh, we try to see various research finding associated with that. Uh, we also discussed various uh, important positive behaviors that are predicted by empathy. Uh, we also kind of uh, distinguish between right kind of empathy because empathy can also be very uh, kind of you know lead to a lot of compassion fatigue and other things. So, right kind of empathy is also very important in that context we discussed uh, you know self oriented perspective and other oriented perspective and how they are different in, in terms of you know uh, their impact on the person itself. And then we have discussed uh, how can we cultivate empathy uh, some of the major uh, indicators of that. So, this these are the some of the things that we have discussed. So, today we will be talking about social skills and um, uh, social intelligence as an important part of emotional intelligence. So, let us start today's lecture. So, in this today's lecture we will be talking about uh, the concept of social skills, emotional intelligence. Uh, more specifically we will be discussing uh, Goldman's model of social intelligence and uh, we will see the impact of social intelligence or social supports or relationship on various indicators of health and well-being of human beings. Uh, at the end we will be discussing uh, social uh, support network analysis, uh, a model or a theory that is called as a convoy model and we will try to understand how it kind of uh, we help us to understand uh, the various aspect of social support system and we will be discussing how can we build social skills and so on. So, when we talk about social skills uh, or social intelligence, this is something very much one of the most fundamental motivation of human being is that we want to bond with other individuals. So, that social instinct is very much available within all human beings, even animals also, that as a, we are kind of social animals, not just you know uh, human beings are called social animals because kind of making bond and creating societies and communities is one of the basic aspect of human life. So, in that context, so we are programmed to bond with others. So, that is a basic kind of motivation that leads to flourishing all of all of human societies. So, this is a fundamental need which does not fade with age. It has a profound implication for our mental and physical health. So, this motivation and kind of starts from childhood as well it remains till we die. This motivation is one thing that is very much evident in the life of human beings at every stages. So, this need for stable and strong social relationship with other is a very powerful motivation. Human being wants to connect and create bond and this is connected to our kind of physical health as well as mental health. Uh, because this is kind of a basic need that we are all want to fulfill that. So, it helps us to establish a network of close caring individuals who can provide social support at the time of distress, sorrows and fears. So, this leads to creation of network of of social support system, uh, which is very important in the time of distress, sorrows and fears. So, kind of social behavior is an kind of instinctive and programmed uh, aspect of human life and uh, 
so that kind of motivates everybody to kind of bond with other individual so in that context social skills can play a very important role in terms of facilitating that uh, ability of creating support system or creating network of individual so that is where social skills comes into the play and the related concept like social intelligence so when we talk about social skills it refers to certain abilities and aptitudes to kind of uh, of individuals uh, to utilize when engaging with others at the personal level. So, when we kind of uh, engage with other individuals or deal with other individuals in the society. So, your abilities and aptitude in terms of dealing with that kind of comes as a social skills uh, with other individuals. So, so that kind of uh, whatever skill that works in terms of creating relationships and harmonious relationship and so on, all this will come under social skills. So, it is a very significant aspect as we already said, not just for fostering social interaction, but also for personal growth as they facilitate self awareness and understanding of others, thereby contributing to the development of oneself concept. So, it is a very significant concept and all our connections and social support networks, everything depends on that. So, in that sense, it is very important for emotionally intelligent human being also. Uh, because connection with other and relationship aspect is very important part of emotional intelligence. So, in that sense, it comes in most of the theories of emotional intelligence talks about the social aspect. So, the social skills can provide a uh, lot of aspects, lot of understanding, lot of you know uh, perspectives. It can promote development of skills. So, when we interact with other, it can kind of lead to the development of various skills such as empathy, reciprocity, role taking and so on. Uh, when we are kind of connecting with other individuals, the feedback from others aids in the cultivation of self control and regulations of one behaviors. So, it kind of enhances your own self awareness also because others can mirror your own uh, behavior. You can know what is right and what is wrong based on the responses of other individual. So, in that also enhances your sense of self awareness. So, the feedback that we get from others in the context of social interaction can also kind of uh, increase your own self awareness, self control and regulation of behavior and so on. Uh, social skills can also bring about you know enjoyments and offer emotional assistance as they enable intimate peer relationship and provide various benefits such as closeness, assistance, support, affection, sense of belongingness and so on. So, it is kind of you know a uh, lot of kind of positive aspects that are associated with you know uh, relationships and other things that can also all this can come and can kind of facilitated by the social skills. So, the concept of uh, another concept which has also been uh, kind of lot of research has gone into it uh, is called a social intelligence which is connected to the concept of social skills and relationship management. So, we will try to understand these concepts and uh, in that context we will understand the concept of skills or social skills also and the concept of relationship management also. So, let us see the concept of uh, social intelligence. So, when we talk about social intelligence again the word clearly you know kind of connotes the idea that you know when somebody is intelligent in the social scenarios or when they are relating with others in the social context how effective one is so that is the idea of social intelligence so social intelligence is the capacity uh, to establish harmonious relationship with others and adaptively navigate complex social relationships and environment so this is uh, something that is comes with the idea of social intelligence. So, simply because you know uh, because the concept of intelligence earlier was only about this processing ability that typical academic intelligence was given very important importance uh, that the more one is able to kind of solve problem critical analysis, logical analysis those were kind of typically looked at as an part of intelligence. Uh, but uh, as we also look, we'll also look at that then, then, then later the concept of multiple intelligences came into the picture where human intelligence was conceptualized uh, not just as one kind of intelligence but there could be multiple intelligences so one such another aspect of intelligence could be social intelligence that some people are simply you know intelligent in the social scenarios in terms of you know connecting with people making harmonious relationships and navigating complex social world and so on so this social intelligence basically pertains to an individual's capacity to comprehend and effectively manage interpersonal connections so this is basically different ways of saying the same thing 
it is about ability to grasp and respond appropriately to the thoughts emotions and behaviors of other so these are the different aspect of social intelligence your ability to grasp understand emotions of yourself and others and respond accordingly the instances of social intelligence may include various aspects such as you know uh, discerning this ability to discern who and to engage in conversation or activity or who and to listen actively so that understanding the context what is the most appropriate behavior so that is kind of also comes under social intelligence when to speak when to listen and so on understanding how to communicate effectively so communication is very important are you able to communicate effectively what you are trying to say knowing the appropriate actions at the appropriate context so that is also part of social intelligence so it could include diverse aspects of um, kind of relationship management in the social context so this social intelligence plays a very uh, pivotal role in various aspects of person's life it enables the formation of friendship alliances and also safeguard against exploitations so social intelligence doesn't mean you are just talking about uh, maintaining relationship and so on it is also if you are intelligent enough you will also be able to safeguard your own exploitation that is also part of intelligence uh, individuals with social intelligence also possess the ability to interpret facial expressions and discern underlying motivation so once our ability of understanding others increases one can understand motivation of others from the facial expression itself as individual mature their social intelligence also develops and expands ideally it should expand that as we understand more and more about other people more we more interact with other people our understanding also enhances and uh, accordingly social intelligence also enhances so on a collective scale social intelligence is fundamental to our functioning as a human being so when we look at collectively as a group of individual not just individually group of human beings uh, we rely on cooperation uh, the right kind of relationships harmonious relationship conflict free relationship all these are very essential for proper group functioning uh, so in that context social intelligence is very important and it has lot of practical implications uh, just as we have discussed in the last lecture empathy is very important it is kind of foundation or it kind of help us to glue with other people it kind of super glue it help us to connect with other individual so similarly social intelligence is also very fundamental in a sense uh, without kind of right kind of understanding and connection with other individual the, as a group cannot work you know so when multiple individuals work in a society or in a group or in a team uh, right kind of understanding and behavior is very important if lot of conflicts happens the group will collapse so social intelligence is very important in that context because our whole uh, existence depends on cooperation and collaboration with other uh, by comprehending both ourselves and others we can foster uh, collaborative endeavors that will mutual benefits so for harmonious uh, functioning and relationship uh, social intelligence is very important you know uh, proficient leaders also often um, exhibit a wealth of social intelligence since establishing relationship and inspiring other is a part of social intelligence so most of the good leaders or leaders who are very successful uh, generally they are having high social intelligence they are able to understand others needs of the others they are able to connect with others build rapport with them and accordingly act and act accordingly so one of the important quality of a good leader is that you know they will have high social intelligence without that a kind of a leader cannot kind of you know kind of motivate and influence the group that connection that understanding is very important now when we see this root of concept of social intelligence it is almost same as Uh, the roots of the concept of emotional intelligence so with the development of this idea of social intelligence the parallel is emotional intelligence also developed so it's kind of very inseparable from each other historically the roots are very similar so as we have already talked about the historical roots of emotional intelligence it is very similar the social intelligence also came from similar roots so if you see it can be traced back to the work of thorndike psychologist Thorndike in 1920s who first used the word social intelligence uh, 
as a component of general intelligence. So, at that time the idea of general intelligence was there, but in 1920s Throndike he actually talked about social intelligence that one of the component of general intelligence should be social intelligence, uh, which according to him was social intelligence is characterized it as a capability of to comprehend humans and engage wisely in the human interaction. How wise you are in terms of while you interact with other individuals how wisely you behave and kind of act. So, obviously, but it was not kind of in included as a uh, formal concept in the theory of intelligence at that time, but he kind of proposed this idea. Uh, then came uh, the one of the most important uh, theory of intelligence which shaped both emotional intelligence and social intelligence is Gardner's, uh, Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. So, which was proposed in 1983, uh, which uh, led to the kind of development of both emotional intelligence and social intelligence, where he talked about that human intelligence could be uh, categorized into multiple dimensions. So, there can be multiple intelligences, not just one kind of intelligence which only talks about problem solving and critical analysis and so on. We can talk about uh, uh, like you know musical intelligence, we can talk about body kinesthetic intelligence, we one can talk about intrapersonal intelligence that how much self awareness you have. One can talk about interpersonal intelligence, so which is same as social intelligence. So, he used the term interpersonal intelligence, which basically means how intelligent you are in terms of when behaving in the interpersonal context kind of uh, behaving or kind of uh, in a situations where there are other individuals, your interaction with other individuals. So, that is the interpersonal intelligence which is basically the social intelligence, which relates to the understanding others, understanding of others. So, in this is list of emotional intelligence and this corresponds to the social intelligence. So, this term kind of evolved like that. Uh, then this word social intelligence was later also again popularized by Goldman who also popularized the emotional intelligence concept and he said emotional intelligence and social intelligence they are kind of uh, kind of uh, you know you cannot kind of separate them to emotional intelligence social intelligence should be a part of it so but he kind of also kind of uh, uh, wrote a separate book on social intelligence uh, in 2006 uh, the name of that book is called as social intelligence the new science of human relationship that also kind of popularized this whole idea of social intelligence and uh, and its role particularly in the concept of emotional intelligence. So, Goldman expanded uh, this whole idea of uh, concept of emotional intelligence and emphasize the importance of social awareness, empathy and interpersonal skills in social interaction and relationships. So, this whole idea of uh, the various components of emotional intelligence if you see uh, the concept of social intelligence is kind of inbuilt in it. And Goldman popularized both emotional intelligence and uh, now uh, later social intelligence also he is given lot of importance. So, let us see what is his model of social intelligence. So, Goldman uh, in 2006 he proposed this model in his book that uh, social intelligence consists of two major components, one is social awareness and another is social facility. So, let us see what are these two components. So, when we talk about social awareness, it is about what we sense about others. So, how aware you are of the social situations of the others who are around you, your awareness level. So, that is the social awareness, awareness of the social context, the others who are interacting with you and so on. So, social awareness refers to the ability to understand and empathize with others as well as accurately perceive social cues and dynamics. So, it includes all these aspects, how able you are in, in terms of understanding others in the social context, are you able to empathize with other individual, understand the other's perspective, how accurately you are able to perceive cues and dynamics in the social context. So, that is about social awareness. Now, Goldman further said that you know the social awareness may have many sub components to it, uh, which may include something like primal empathy, attunement, empathic accuracy and social cognition. So, these are uh, four important components of social awareness. 
So let us see each of them very briefly. So when we talk about primal empathy, it is basically about instinctive ability to sense and share others person emotions. So some people can very instinctively understand others perspective, others emotions, you know, very, uh, very instinctively and very instantly. So that ability is called primal empathy. To what extent you are able to understand others perspective, how especially if they are going through certain emotional situations, you understand how they are going through those situations, what are their feelings, how they are looking the, at the world. So that kind of uh, ability to understand others worldview and uh, this instincting ability is called as primal empathy to understand and share others emotion. So it allows individual to connect emotionally with others and establish rapport. So if the more you are able to understand others perspective, more you can connect with them emotionally as well as mentally. So that is something called as primal empathy. So this could enhance your social awareness. This is one important component. Second is attunement. So the attunement is about capacity uh, to accurately perceive and understand non-verbal cues and signals from others. So attunement is about understanding more about body language of others and kind of act and respond accordingly. So human emotions are not just reflected by what they say, but it is more about how their body language expresses. Uh, so, so many time you know face body kind of expresses emotion much more clearly and much more accurately than what people actually say. So that attunement is the, the, the capacity of accurately perceive and understand non-verbal cues and signals from others and you and uh, kind of you know regulating your own behavior according to that. So it involves being attentive to facial expression, uh, tone of the voice, body language and other subtle indicators of emotions. So more you are able to understand that more you, one will be able to kind of connect with other, understand the motivation of other and behave more appropriately in that context. Uh, so that is uh, also part of social awareness. So attunements allows individuals to tune in with others emotional states, enhancing their ability to empathize and respond appropriately. So this ability allows you to tune in, uh, tune in with others emotional state and connect with them. So that is the attunement second part of social awareness. Third is empathic accuracy. Uh, so empathic accuracy basically it is about ability to accurately perceive and understand another person thought feelings and perspective. So to what extent to what extent your ability of finding accurately in terms of the perception and understanding of other persons thought feelings and perspective you know so from whatever they say and their body languages and so on. So what to what extent you are accurate in terms of understanding and perceiving others thought feelings and perspective. So the more you are able to understand accurately about others, the more social awareness you have uh, and your behavior will be more appropriate in that context. So it involves accurately inferring the internal experiences of others. How do you infer from whatever you hear and whatever you see? You infer from all these cues uh, to what extent, what e extent it is accurate. So that is kind of empathic accuracy even when they are not explicitly expressed one can get ideas from non-verbal as well as other cues in the context. So this empathic accuracy allows individual to go beyond surface level understanding and gain insight into the underlying emotions and motivations of others. So empathic accuracy helps you to get kind of deeper understanding of emotions of other individuals and motivations of other individuals. So this also enhances your part of social awareness. The last one is social cognition. It is about uh, ability to understand and navigate complex social situations. Now it is not about understanding just one individual. So complex situations, how do you able to understand and uh, deal with them? So that is that includes broadly social cognition aspects. It involves uh, perceiving, comprehending larger social context, including social norms, groups dynamics and understand underlying motivations of individuals and so on. So, social behavior is not just about connecting with one or two individuals, it is about understanding the norms of the situation, norm of the society, what is the group dynamics, 
what are the underlying motivations and so on. So, all these other cues are also very important. So, social cognition is about that understanding, social awareness is about that understanding also. So, social cognitions allows individuals to make sense of social interactions, predict behavior and adjust their own responses accordingly. So, uh, this is also part of social awareness. The next component of the Goldman model is social facility. So, social awareness and uh, the four component we have discussed. Now, the second important aspect of Goldman's model of social intelligence is social facility. Let us see uh, what this is all about. So, it is about what we do with social awareness. So, now we understood what is social awareness. Now, just having social awareness may not be enough in terms of kind of it also uh, includes the intelligent behavior also includes what you do with that awareness. Now, you are aware of lot of things, but how do you kind of convert that awareness into actions? So, what you do with the social awareness is the is, is associated with this concept of social facility. So, this social facility refers to capacity to act effectively in social situations and maintain positive relationships. It comprises of again uh, four components just like social awareness. So, facility is more about actions what you do out of your awareness. So, that is social facility. It may include components like synchrony, self presentation, influence and concern. So, let us see all these four components. So, for synchrony is about skills of mirroring and attuning one's behavior to match that of others. So, here more if you see it is more of actions earlier it was more of awareness. So, there also attunement was more about underst understanding nonverbal cues and so on. Here how do you change yourself or do actions from those awarenesses. So, that is the difference here. So, in the synchrony it is about a skills of mirroring and attuning one's behavior. So, whatever you understand from others uh, behaviors and uh, non-verbal behaviors and so on. So, your skills to mirror that and regulate your own behavior to match with others. So, that both are in the same page you know. So, that kind that at attunement is also called as is called as synchrony. So, here it is behavioral aspect is given focus. It include aspects such as mimicking body language, adopting similar speech pattern, establishing a sense of rapport and harmony with others. So, right kind of communication also involves attunement with others other you know making a synchronized conversation. So, based on kind of speech pattern if somebody is speaking at a certain uh, level voice and tone and your is very different. So, there will be mismatch. So, synchrony is about regulating that and matching with the other individual and establishing a sense of rapport understanding mimicking the body language of others and responding accordingly. So, these are all part of synchrony. Second is self presentation. Uh, so, self presentation basically is about ability to present oneself in a manner that is congruent with one goals and values. Uh, so, basically how do you present yourself according to the situations according to the goals and values that you have. Uh, so, you kind of present yourself and change the presentation according to the need and so on. So, it is more about uh, impression management and projecting the image that is desired and so on. So, that is also part of social facility. How do you change and uh, know, kind of uh, regulate your behavior for impression management and so on. Influence is the fourth component uh, sorry another component of social facility. It is about uh, ability to persuade and guide others effectively. So, it involves skills such as effective communication, negotiation and ability to motivate and inspire others. So, how can you influence other in terms of whatever you want to communicate? So, it includes communication skills so that you, you are kind of clearly stating what you want and uh, accordingly manipulate the behavior of other individuals. So, it is able to persuading to what extent you can persuade other people and you know change their behavior and guide their actions towards a goal and so on. So, it is an important quality for leadership particularly those who are in the position of leaders they should know how to influence rightly uh, and uh, bring about behavior in such a way that their 
kind of reach the goals whatever set by the leader or the organization and so on. So, it includes uh, all the skills like communication skills, negotiation skills, ability to motivate and inspire others. So, that is called influence. So, part of it will come from the social awareness, influence also can develop. The last component is called concern, it refers to genuine care and empathy for others well being. It involves actively considering and responding to the needs and feelings and interest of others. So, that is an uh, important part of social facility that is a genuine care and empathy for others well being. So, that concern also kinds of build social intelligence. You know, people who are socially intelligent they are also concerned with the well beings of other individuals who are around them uh, and try to actively consider and responding to the needs of others, feelings and interest of others. So, in that way you also connect because you are also concerned about them otherwise the right kind of connection will not happen. So, these are uh, four important components of uh, soci uh, social facility and there are four components of social awareness. So, social awareness and facility uh, both are very important part of social intelligence both has to be there to for an uh, for kind of enhancement of social intelligence. So, in this model Goldman's model social awareness and facility are interconnected both are interconnected. So, without awareness you cannot have a social facility part or action part then action will not be appropriate. The right action comes from right awareness. So, if you understand things then only right actions could happen. So, these are interconnected concepts uh, with social awareness serving as the foundation for effective facility. Without proper social awareness one cannot have the right kind of actions. So, this developing social intelligence involves enhancing both components of self awareness. So, it in involves development of all the components that we talked about. Broadly, it basically talks about self awareness, empathy, interpersonal skills, deeper understanding of human behavior and dynamics. All these things are part of concept of social intelligence and uh, the more we develop them more we become socially intelligent. Now, we will see now kind of uh, the different research findings related to the impact of this social intelligence or social support kind of or right good relationships with other individual kind of all these are connected to each other concepts. Concept of social intelligence, social support, relationship these are all connected to each other and uh, the various research have been conducted on these concepts and uh, we will see what is the impact of this on various dimensions of human behavior. For example, social intelligence has been associated with various variables such as uh, lower level of social intelligence is associated with psychopathology like depression, anxiety and loneliness. So, research shows that uh, people with low level of social intelligence they are more vulnerable for various kinds of psychopathology like depression, anxiety more likely to be lonely and so on. Uh, so, these are kind of likelihood possibility are high. Uh, research also shows that organizational leaders with high social intelligence are more likely to report better success at work better work atmosphere and productivity. So, leaders with high social intelligence generally they in terms of their performance are much better um, the work atmosphere productivity and so on also kind, uh, kind of you know research shows they are much better uh, especially if leadership positions the persons has higher social intelligence. Uh, furthermore, uh, social intelligence is also an integral part of development and maintenance of relationships. The people with high social intelligence they are also kind of develop as well as maintain harmonious relationship with other individual and this social relationship or support system has been linked to various kind of positive impacts of mental and physical health. For example, individuals with fewer relationships uh, had uh, higher rates of mortality compared with peers with average amount of uh, social relationship. Some of the research shows even mortality rate could be connected to the social support system or uh, kind of uh, relationships with other individuals you know uh, kind of higher rates of mortality are reported by as compared to peers with less social support system. So, uh, fewer uh, people with fewer relationships here relationship basically in that context it is used the right kind of healthy support system is there. 
they have generally person who has a less those kind of support system they are more likely to uh, report means their uh, rates of mortality seems to be more as compared to people with higher uh, than average amount of social relationships or support system so we'll see why that could be the possible reasons we'll see why this social support is very important even it can influence your mortality rate your so why that could be uh, an important reasons so we'll try to see so many uh, negative health problems has been associated with also fewer number and reduced quality of social relationship uh, even lot of cardiovascular disease uh, high blood pressures heart uh, issues and so on has also been linked with social quality of social relationships and the networks and so on so various health issues could also be related to lack of social relationships in terms of uh, support system so it could be manifest itself in the physical uh, diseases and so on that is why it could be linked to mortality rate also people with low quality and low number of social connections and relationships have also higher likelihood of developing depression social anxiety loneliness and suicidal ideation so those are also some of the research findings uh, so this could also manifest in all these forms social support uh, relationships can also be a good source of coping during the stress people with higher social support experience less stress and cope successfully so one of the more important part of this uh, whole uh, support system is that you know people are able to cope in the difficulties or difficult time when there are other people who could support you uh, they can cope in a much better way because we cannot deal with every aspect of our life alone when other there are other individuals who could support us automatically then uh, our strength increases our resource increases when i cannot do alone if there are two other individuals who will support me i can do that work very easily because there are other individuals whose energy whose skills resources will be added to me so that is what kind of you know help us also especially in the difficult times or distressing time social support can play a very important role uh, because uh, you know they can cope in a much better way so social support also also found to lower blood pressures with individuals faced with short term stressors and so on so these are basically indicators uh, successful coping is associated with uh, with good social support system there is a classic study done by you know barkman and syme in 1979 on a large sample of uh, like uh, 6000 almost 7000 individuals in california oh, and this was a longitudinal study means the same group of individuals were followed for 9 years and the intermittently data were collected from them for, uh, they took data for 9 years from the same group of individuals so those kind of studies are called longitudinal study uh, and this study was about also finding out this uh, the impact of social connections and support system and uh, the research uh, the result of this study shows that compared to those with most social contacts isolated men and women were respectively 2.3 to 2.8 times more likely to die even after controlling for variety of other health related variables like smoking alcohol consumption self reported health at the beginning of the study and physical activity so all these other factors which could influence your health which could influence your mortality or death all these are controlled and only the impact of social support has been seen on the mortality to what extent you know so in this 9 years of period with this large sample of study they found people with higher social contacts and connection and support system they are less likely to die with, with the passage of time and uh, as compared to that isolated men and women they are more more likely means more than twice 2.3 for men and 2.8 times for women it's kind of you know that pro- probability increases that doesn't mean everybody will die means basically it's probabilistically talking about so uh, so probability of death increases from the whatever data that increases you know depending on the social support system so it's it's, it's a very large scale study so we cannot really neglect the findings so it indicates something uh, that the importance of this uh, whole concept of social support system many other studies uh, including meta analysis meta analysis means basically uh, when 
a particular study tries to kind of summarize findings of many studies in a particular direction and see the trend in that particular area of research. So, in meta analysis, uh, they did 148 studies they analyzed, conducted between 1982 to 2007, involving over about 3 lakh uh, individuals. Found that individuals with stronger social relationships have 50 percent greater likelihood of survival compared to those with weak and insufficient social relationships. So, again, it is 50 percent greater likelihood of survival. So, again this also shows most of the studies are kind of uh, indicating similar thing. Studies have also shown that higher social support is linked to better survival rates following cardiovascular diseases, uh, breast cancer and HIV infections. So, people with this kind of uh, you know, uh, life threatening diseases also they are more likely to survive if, if they have better support system. Uh, as compared to those who have less support system. So, what could be the reason behind it? Why such findings? Why lot of findings are indicating in the same direction? What could be the possible reasons? So, one of the possible reasons is the positive effect of social support in the survival could be connected to biologic impact of social support on the biology itself and the body itself. Uh, social support has been found to have beneficial effects on cardiovascular, endocrine and immune system. So, because if you are able to cope with difficulties and distress stress that if you have better social support system you are likely to cope with stressful situations of your life more and stress has very bad impact on our cardiovascular health our health, heart is directly influenced by stress the more stress we experience it has very you know especially the chronic stress long term stress could lead to various cardiovascular diseases so social support can kind of protect people from all these negative effects of stress more likely to uh, kind of protect. It can also protect various endocrine uh, know, glands, glands which are uh, responsible for uh, for example, under distress adrenal gland releases various hormones like cortisol and so on which could lead to various uh, negative impact in the of the health uh, including heart and uh, reduces immune functions and so on. So, immune system is also something could be directly connected to uh, people who experience more stress and negative uh, adversities in their life. So, the thing is for all this negative emotional experience social support could protect you know act as a protect protector. So, it will kind of reduce the impact of stress on that. So, it slot, slows down or reduces the physiological and uh, neuroendocrine response to stress. So, that could be one of the reason why you know it was directly connected to mortality itself. Uh, social support has also been linked to boosting immune system. So, the more support system you have more happy one feels more kind of protected one feels. So, that also boosts immune system of the body more stress and distress we feel the more insecure we feel all this has a negative emotions has a negative impact on the immune system. Uh, all this has been biologically established. So, there is not like uh, just theoretical talk research has clearly shown the biological pathways for these kind of things. Uh, so, linked to boosting immune system especially among people who are experiencing stress. Uh, so, in that way it could have a lot of positive impact on the body itself. It is also linked to reduce blood pressure for people performing stressful tasks. Again, these are all connected to the same thing. Uh, social support facilitates coping and health outcomes by having beneficial physiological effect in stressful situations. So, basically it will protect the negative protect from the negative impact of chronic stress particularly. It is also possible that social support may lead to better health behaviors such as healthy diet, exercise, smoking cessation and cooperation with the medical whatever you know timing and uh, taking medicine in time and so on. Because if there are supportive people around you they will help you to do those kind of works. Uh, whenever specially needed. So, they can kind of protect you in terms of giving you right kind of diet or at least encouraging you to do that all kinds of things which are required for your health like you know providing right size healthy diets, motivating for exercise, quitting smoking and so on all this negative uh, no, behavior. Uh, if there are people who are supportive can also give you right kind of you know right help you to 
take medications in the right time and so on. All these other behavioral aspects also comes into the picture, which can also indirectly have a positive impact on the health itself. So, uh, there are kind of two types of hypotheses that are kind of we can see in the literature related to social support system. So, one is called as direct effect hypothesis, which says uh, that social support is generally beneficial in all the time, both stressful and non-stressful time. And uh, buffering hypothesis says it predicts the social support is primarily beneficial during the period of high stress. Uh, so, according to this hypothesis, social support acts as a buffer or protective resources and mitigates the negative effect of stress during the time of high stress. So, these are two hypotheses. One is it is beneficial for all the time, whether stressful or non-stressful. And one hypothesis specifically says it is more important during the time of stress, uh, because then it kind of protects, it act like a buffer, you know, which absorbs the stress from outside. So, if there are people around you, supportive network, they will also absorb your stress and you will receive the less shock from the stress itself. So, research shows both our uh, evidences are available for both supporting support of both the hypothesis are supported by the research. So, uh, research shows social support seems to play a significant role in all the time and more specifically it is also important during the stress also. Now, we will see at the uh, kind of end uh, we will see uh, something called as a convoy model, uh, which kind of help us to analyze the network system and understand our own social network. Uh, so, that was kind of proposed by uh, developed by uh, these two person, one is Tony Antonuxi and uh, Robert Kahn of the University of Michigan in 1980s. So, convoy model basically says uh, that uh, in our life uh, a group of people, we are not alone as an individual. So, there are a group of individuals who move with us in our life. So, it include our family, parents, friends and so on. So, they are also we are as a group of individuals we are moving in our life together in our life. So, there is a convoy of people. Now, among all these people, some people will have differ in terms of our uh, strength of relationship. Uh, so, we all move together in our life, but uh, the relationship may vary in their closeness. Some will be very close, some may not be very close in their quality of relationship, some relationships could be of high quality, some may be less quality. Their functions, some relationship should could be functionally very different. So, in some aspect you may be acting as a father, some aspect you may be acting as a son and so on. So, functionally they could be very different. Uh, and the structure of relationship in terms of contact frequency, geographical proximity, some may be very close to you physically, some may be very dif distant uh, you know geographically and so on. Some people you contact very frequently, some people you do not contact very frequently. So, all this structure could also be very in our network. So, this uh, convoy measures placing individuals who are very close and important individuals uh, or all these individuals, they can be kind of put in a kind of thematic mapping who are from very close, uh, from close, closer to closest. So, this could be kind of depicted like this. So, let us say you are here. So, the inner circle, the first circle kind of represent the people who are closest to you, like closest friends and family members. You cannot imagine life without them. So, the closest people, your friends, families, the best friends, your fam close family members and so on. So, they comes under your inner circle, the people who are in your inner circle. So, you share all your secrets and details to this, this kind of individual, most trustworthy people. Uh, then comes the middle circle. So, again as the circle goes outside means your closeness also decreases. So, in the middle circle uh, basically these are also close individuals, but not as close as the inner circle, but still they are very important individuals, you know. So, maybe uh, some friends who are not very close, but still they are friends, uh, you meet them sometimes and you know, they also are important part of your life probably, but not as close as people who are in your inner circle. So, that is called people in the middle circles. They are not quite as close, but still important. And the last is the outer circle. 
individuals who are in the outer circles uh, they are kind of people who are less close but still they are part of your life it could be like you know some colleagues in your one place you don't have much connections but still they are part of your life uh, you may not have much contact and you know, much connection but they are still you know visible in some aspect of your life so those are called people in the outer circle so every network of individuals for everybody's life so some people will be in the inner circle some will be in the middle some will be in the outer circles so this is how we can kind of divide our kind of look at our network of social support and kind of analyze people either in the inner middle or outer circles and also see how many people are there in the inner how many are in the middle how many in their outer circles so people could differ in that connection so that is kind of one exercise we can do in terms of finding out our network social support network uh, by listing people in the inner middle and outer circle so this people in convoy represents our social support network these people support us and we support them there is a mutual support system work us it is essential that we maintain our convoy throughout the life particularly people in the inner circles so this is very important in terms of looking at the quality of social support network particularly it is very important to maintain the relationship especially with the inner circles people if in all circles that is good but especially the inner circle individuals are most important maintaining relationship throughout the life with them is very important uh, so that is something the in terms of implication of at least some individual should be there in your inner circle who who could actually you know the best support system comes from them so in terms of building social skills social support system so many things uh, could be you know discussed and so on uh, and this is very important in terms of one's uh, physical mental health as well as emotional intelligence the concept we are talking about a uh, lot of things that most of these things we have already discussed in various lectures so the idea is building social skills requires certain understanding of oneself and the others which is uh, the whole idea about emotional intelligence so certain skills are very important certain aspects are very important which may include things like empathy without this we will not be able to understand others and make connection with others we have discussed in detail about empathy in the last lecture so empathy is very important uh, in terms of building social skills communication is also very important the right kind of you know communication and uh, clarity in kind of telling what you want and what are your expectations and so on so communications uh, are very important or especially when there are conflicts and issues making the right communication is very important you know, sometimes lack of communication create lot of misunderstandings and so on so the communication also plays very important role uh, in terms of building social skills conflict resolution conflict will happen when people are connected with each other sometimes there will be you know right good phase sometimes there will be bad phase and conflicts and so on how do you resolve that that is the part of social skills conflict will happen but resolution is something very important are you able to resolve them are you able to wherever necessary you know even you no know, you know kind of be flexible enough to kind of accommodate others even problems and kind of maintain the harmonious relationship understanding group dynamics so whenever we are working in a group or in an organization or in a society understanding the dynamics and responding accordingly is very important in the context of social skills openness to change some people are very rigid they they are not they cannot change themselves or their thought processes so then you cannot kind of with the passage of time people can change and if you don't change you will not be able to kind of deal with other, other individuals so that necessary sense of flexibility is very important that openness to change and even you know look at others perspective and understand them is also very important ability to collaborate wherever necessary with other individuals by putting aside your own judgments and kind of sometimes you require to work with others and understand their perspectives and then collaboration can be possible and flexibility is something which is also very important you know according to the need you can need to adjust yourselves so these are important aspects of building social skills uh, one need to and most of these things we have also kind of did in detail discussed in many other lectures 
So, here we are not going into the details of it. So, social skills is one can build these skills by working on a lot of these aspects and uh, with the best progress of, of our age probably it should increase. So, with this I stop here and uh, these are this is about various skills of emotional intelligence. In the next module we will be talking about some specific applications of emotional intelligence. So, with this I stop here. Thank you. Thank you.